Hello everyone, I wanted to do something new to once again celebrate Women's History Month. So I visited the Black Archives of Mid-America to learn about some women in my community. The exhibit opens up with a poem by Langston Hughes. I look at the world from awakening eyes and a black face, and this is what I see. This fenced off narrow space assigned to me. I look then at the silly walls through dark eyes and a dark face, and this is what I know. That all these walls oppression builds will have to go. I look at my own body with eyes no longer blind, and I see that my own hands can make the world that's in my mind. Then let us hurry, comrades, the road to find. One of the first I learned about was Lucille Bluford class valedictorian at Lincoln High School in 1928, Lucille also graduated with honors from the University of Kansas, commonly known as KU, in 1932. She advanced from cup reporter to editor, owner, and publisher of the Kansas City Call in her career. Ms. Bluford will go down in history as one of the most unparalleled African-American personalities in our city. At one time, we had no African-American council members or representatives. All we had was Ms. Bluford. That was by Emmanuel Cleaver II from the Kansas City Star. With all this knowledge, it makes sense why there is a public library which I have been to several times named after her. Next is Myra Taylor. She began her career in 1932 as a dancer and singer performing in clubs around the 18th and Vine Street District, going on to the USO and other overseas tours during World War II. She performed with Clarence Love, Jay McShann, and Nat King Cole. Myra has been called the last authentic swing singer in Kansas City tradition. Taylor died December 9, 2011 at the age of 94 and is buried in Bonner Springs, Kansas. This was also fun to read about since I got the opportunity to meet people who were friends of Myra and admirers in the jazz community. They were celebrating her birthday, and it was amazing to see how much she was loved. The next woman is Elizabeth Bruce Krogman. She established the Florence Home for Colored Girls, which provided shelter for single Black mothers. This was created because similar organizations denied care to young Black women. It eventually expanded to offer counseling, education, shelter, and medical care to dozens of Kansas City's impoverished Black mothers and children. Next up is Anna Jones, one of the first groups to form was the Kansas City Colored Women's League, founded in 1892 by Josephine Ceylon Yates and Anna H. Jones. The Women's League strived to change negative images of black women prevalent in the greater society and to create programs and training to help women of all ages. 
Jones worked with Yates to establish a YWCA in Kansas City, Kansas. Jones was also an active member of the Pierian, a book club founded there in 1893. I also saw Lucy's cabin. The cabin belonged to Lucy Willis, who was a 17-year-old black slave of William Willis. She had a five-year-old mulatto daughter named Rosa. Ownership of Lucy and Rosa transferred from William Willis to William Neal Pierre, who married Mr. Willis's stepdaughter. During that time, Lucy was emancipated, although the date is unknown, but most likely occurred at the end of the Civil War. Her cabin where she lived was preserved, being rebuilt, and moved several times until it reached the Black Archives of Mid-America. The final woman I learned about is someone who is still making art today. Dr. Marla A. Jackson is a world-renowned visual narrative artist and quilter. Her narrative quilts are inspired by the oral histories of her ancestors in the Kansas region. One of her most famous works is part of a permanent collection at Smithsonian's Anacostia community. I really loved looking at how the black women were made. The ones of Nina Simone and Billie Holiday were just gorgeous, especially the gold in Miss Holiday's face. The one about hashtag me too was one that stood out to me with the blotted reds inside the blues and stark white silhouettes of some of the women. The piece about the trial of Celia was so heart-wrenching. It was about a black female slave who murdered her owner and the jewelry was made up of white men. I will link Cecilia's story in the description for anyone who wants to read. And to end it all, here is Dr. Jackson's family portrait and also her self-portrait. It was the first thing that caught my eye and I just love all the twists and colors of the piece. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about these women as much as I did. I only included a few things, but there was a lot more art by Dr. Marla A. Jackson and more history stored in the Black Archives. I hope this inspires you to check out these people and organizations and to also learn about women's history in general. Check out my last video and subscribe to see what else I'll have to offer. Thanks again for watching and as always, may grace be in your space.